fine. None of us are in our facilities here, so you won't be recording um, any of our facilities, so I think that's okay. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Does this mean my wife is going to see the clutter, that we recorded the clutter in the back of this shot? Well, you can. You haven't put your green screen up, like uh, Jim and. Uh, yeah, that's nice. You could, be on the, you could be on the moon too. I love that. Jim, I'm jealous I of your background. I, I, need to be uh, uh, I like being Boston up here Harbor on the moon. behind me here, but. <laughs> it's a good place to be. Yeah, the Earth looks much more peaceful from up here. Just the blue, the blue uh, ball in the background. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's no viruses in space either, right? No, no. Hey, Tom. Hi, Jessica. Glad you could join. <laughs> okay. So, uh, long time no see. Oh, Tom. Uh, so everyone's here, I think. Um, I'll just uh, start to give a little background. Um, uh, so uh, George suggested we... Um, we connect with uh, Jessica here about some of our uh, our efforts to open source uh, release some of the medical equipment we've designed. Uh, Is this Simon? It sounds speaking? like Ben's already. Uh, yes, sir. Simon okay. Shaver. Okay, Simon. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm I'm on the phone as well as on the computer because uh, okay. my computer audio uh, fades out. So I'm the one 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 nine number. Okay. Uh, so I work at, at uh, TSE, the spaceship company, uh, under George, and um, a lot of these folks do. And then there's some folks here from NASA, um, and we can go around and uh, introduce ourselves real quick. I apologize. This is only a 30-minute meeting uh, because of our Zoom limitations. I can make a second meeting uh, for later on if we have um, discussions that go further. I'm happy to do that. So... Yep. Uh, some of the, the medical we've, uh, equipment we've worked on for COVID-19 are um, very simple and intended to be some uh, items that any anyone could make in their uh, garage out of uh, generally available materials. Um, some of the things we've designed, some other things are, are more complicated. But um, I think NASA has done some more thinking and work on this is how to... Um, release some of the open source stuff and Rob um, I'm, has done work on this and I'm I'm coming in here uh, late to the game so he's uh, been working on a, a cookbook as we call it of these uh, different ideas and designs so um, I'll let him speak to what he's been uh, working on and ideas for release and then um, let um, any of the the NASA guys that want to um, explain what they've been going over. I basically I don't want to, um, for at least for TSC and NASA's concern, uh, to uh, be doing the same thing from from different angles. At least uh, coordinate our uh, release efforts because we're working on a lot of the projects um, together. Well, good so afternoon. What, this is Rob. Thank you, Simon. You give me too much credit for the things there. So with the Antelope Valley Task Force, we've prototyped several uh, COVID hood designs, and these are hoods that uh, provide positive pressure in a slightly rich oxygen environment to the patient and help offset the need for ventilators down the road. Um, And so there's an extreme interest in this, across the country. Uh, I've been contacted by other communities asking about the product simply because of the press that's been put out there. And it just occurs to us that if it could be open source, that might be helpful, you know, sort of first principle, help as many people as we possibly can. The, um, the One of the designs we very consciously made from rend- just readily available materials. We didn't want to go into the medical industry at all where there might be a constraint. And uh, Simon has led that prototyping effort. And I've had a, we've already had a community contact us in one product. Um, I was a little bit surprised. It was Juno, Alaska, 
and they're they're handling the crisis very well so far but they're also very concerned because they're sort of sea bound and if cruise ships started coming in it's a great percentage of their population and all their goods come in by ship and they're you know it's a challenging thing to bring food and that into the Juneau Alaska area so they're very concerned and trying to prepare and they want 11 prototype hoods right away I immediately offered well we could go down the path of kits or we could go down the path of here's the plans and they actually came back and said no we want the complete thing and I think it's just because the doctors don't have a lot of time and they don't want to have to fiddle with it uh, but still, I think there's huge value if we could be guided in how to open source plans and what they should look like, how they should be constructed to be easy for people. You know, us engineers, we're terrible. We open the box and throw the plans away, but not everybody's like that. <laughs> so we're just, we're all ears to any suggestions you folks have at this early stage of trying to uh, take this product and make it available to the world. And then on your fourth try, you finally get it to, to go together right after you've thrown the plans away, right? Well, yeah, actually, but on the, we usually on redesign. The, <laughs> you redesign yeah, it on the, the process, right? <laughs> on the first two tries, you figure out how the way it should have been put together. <laughs> yeah. That's probably true with most things, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, can uh, anyone at, at NASA speak to um, what the, the plans are or vision for releasing um, any of the designs from, uh, from your end? Dave, do you want me to chime in or do you have some uh, uh, comments first? Hold on a second. My uh, mic just went out or my uh, speaker just went out. Um, so the question was, what is NASA doing? Or I'm yeah, sorry. what are the, um, the the current efforts or your I guess uh, intent? We spoke. Um, it came up in the meeting this morning, um, more related to uh, Mike's uh, Mike's hood design, um, and I think we're focused more on um, using the bucket collar and then some of the other uh, the PVC. Uh, mobile shield and um, some other items that would we wouldn't make or distribute it'd be uh, anyone anywhere could access this uh, uh, plans right I think uh, with Mike's hood or you know with the hood design with through Mike is uh, is something that we're we're going through the uh, FDA emergency use authorization process I think we're planning to, uh, you know, locally manufacture maybe 500 of them. We're working on that process right now to actually make 500 of them. And uh, hopefully things come together where we get authorization and uh, they're made here locally. So, I and I think uh, Mike is putting together with Rob, you know, some pretty good engineering documents on how to put it all together. Or we're taking some pictures and video today. Um, got authorized to send a photographer out outside their house to go do it. And um, so they're going to have some pretty good videos and pictures today on putting things together. So that'll all come together. And, uh, you know, when uh, our group thinks thinks that we're in good enough shape, um, We'll, we'll put a release out. I think NASA wide is putting out some big release on what they're all doing across the NASA centers. And so our efforts will be part of that. As for Mike Allen's, I mean, Alan Parker's uh, um, tent, negative pressure tent that he's been working on with Steve and, and TSC. Uh, I think once the plans are good enough, um, I, I think we're good to go with that one in the release process as uh, decided upon um, with our with our group. I just want to make sure, you know, everybody's in concurrence on how we manage things that come out of their, our AV task force. I mean, if people are working independently, no, no problems. But if it's coming out of the task force and been discussed as one of our key projects, then I would 
say we should make sure that we're coordinated on it. So we're all sending out similar messages and not duplicating messages out there, so. Agreed. Hey Dave, Kevin Rohr here from Mass. I'll just uh, chime in on top of that, that yes, and, and, and they're still contemplating out of our headquarters office when they may have a bigger news release or media message or story or something that they're gonna release and had a conversation yesterday with Alana from uh, spaceship company Virgin and we're in sync with what her thoughts and desires are. Um, I think going back to part of the initial intent of the question was communicating with others in the medical industry that don't let anything that NASA is contemplating on a larger release interfere with that. That if you have plans and if the hospital or some other medical facility is interested, by all means, share what you need to share and uh, pass on designs or finished products. Um, the, the one small complication with our headquarters public affairs team is, is they don't want to put out things like, hey, we may have something that could be or should be or this is available if you want it. They, they, don't, they only want to talk about things once uh, we get stuff up and operational and proven and out there and in implementation phase as opposed to getting ready to go deliver X amount of this to Y facility. Um, so I think the short answer is use the maker sites and use your other personal contacts and keep pushing the information out there. Uh, but if we do get any significant media, that's when we would want to reel it back into the, the Virgin Public Affairs Office or NASA or anybody else's. Okay, Jessica, um, maybe you might uh, want to uh, jump in here and say what, what you do in your involvement, um, I guess, in the maker maker community and uh, previous history with um, releases of uh, certain DIY uh, information. Okay, so, well, my involvement is, I am a, I'm a landscape architect, actually, so my interest and involvement has been mainly through trying to open source environmental testing electronics so that they could be ubiquitous and people would have more access to environmental data. Um, so I'm more reaching out to folks very involved in the development of the, all the tech to find that. And so, uh, and by Marchin here is Open Source Ecology Founder, which is and doing this in so many ways, really developing a whole set of uh, tools for actually starting a whole civilization. So <laughs> you want to build that house on Mars, you can do it. <laughs> but starting with a 3D printer process, um, uh, everything's open source. The process is even open, open source, the collaborative design process as well. Um, so I think he'd be the one to speak really to some of the specifics about ideas of around how we could really help support this process of, of open sourcing these products. It's, I'm really, more than anything, just excited to hear that you're all uh, also on the same page in terms of knowing that uh, um, making it open source is, a, is sort of really the right thing to do in a kind of context like this. So um, yeah, Marcia, do you want to yeah, yeah, I can, introduce I can. yourself further? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, so my name is Marcia, and so I'm the founder of Open Source Ecology. So we design and build open source industrial machines publish the plans on the internet so the whole process is open and transparent throughout from like for example like you guys are talking about uh, okay when are we gonna release that with our publicity department we publish early and often on a wiki so we use the open source ecology wiki uh, as far as <clears throat> what we'd like to do is we're still kinda evaluating like so we've got some production capacity as in we we actually b build printers design and build 3d printers and all kinds of other machines but um, kind of following the developments of all the different machines such as like the the PAPRs, ventilators, masks and everything else related to the crisis like how can we get involved in it that's what we talk about we'd like to produce some of the things once we identify some really good candidates that that meet our needs let's see did I cut out or can you guys still hear me
Sorry, I cut out there. That's where you guys talking about yeah, opening yeah. up the plans is interesting um, approach where you're you're not trying to you know manufacture this product. I think partly what what this group OSC can really help with is that notion of also giving anyone the capability to manufacture it. Um, that's part of what the training involving people in this group is is that they are then able to uh, manufacture any of the products themselves. Um, yeah, I think the, so the I'm sorry, I Go interrupted. Ahead. I, I think the open, you know, community has been, uh, you know, really good. The 3D printers and, and things coming off the 3D printers, but I don't think the open community has really. This is the pandemic has really opened up something about the maker community getting involved with actual medical type devices. I, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. Holy cow! Mm -hmm. It's the I agree, and, and and so it's it's uh, it's a whole different world than what I think our maker community is used to. Hey, you know, I did this cool you know, 3D printer uh, makeup on my uh, at home, and here's some items I made on my 3D printer. I'm just going to print this out real time, and now somebody posts out a medical device real time. Mm -hmm. They're going to find that uh, you know the doctors you know, are all innovative people themselves. They're going to want to use it, but then becomes, you know, if it doesn't work the way the makers, you know, thought it would, you know, it, so it's a whole different industry that's popping out here. And I think, you know, the people that are involved in the maker community still have their maker attitudes and they are not, mm -hmm. you know, so I think there's, in issues that we're going to have to resolve as a country on, you know, how do we get this going? You know, so. mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's that, that access idea, right, when you're talking about who can make these, who's able to afford the production, you know, but it does, you can drop prices and things dramatically and significantly. So we're really focused at OSC on, on modularity as well, so that, you know, if there's upgrades and things, the way that stuff is designed, it's in super small pieces, it's partly how the collaborative design process works, so you're able to, you know, plug in upgrades quickly, but I agree with the sort of licensing of it. And maybe the idea that Rob was saying, you know, making uh, it not necessarily being for the medical community, but for other folks, other 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 situations. We have um, some members producing things for hospitals. It's been made in the vacuum sealed mask, uh, and then some of them were for drivers and things, not actually the doctors and nurses. It was for folks that are like. You know, kind of extensions of the medical community and, and part of so of somebody being provided. So uh, this. So I'm marching back, huh? Dave. Yeah. <clears throat> You're back. Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, no, I mean, I think the thing I can say right now is that we can offer some assistance in terms of getting some production capacity up, like by building 3D printers or printing out or building some of the equipment that comes about so my personal role has been kind of watching what what exactly exists and now can we jump on into the production of something that's actually uh, designed and proven effective so that's where I would see ourselves coming in besides the idea of the collaborative design process so we we do collaborative design and that's where uh, we just have basic infrastructure like the wiki and collaborative development protocols that we use to to foster larger scale collaboration. Um, yeah, so that's basically what we can offer. So Rob, um, what vision did you have for releasing the uh, some of the other cookbook items? Well, I, I think and table the mind, and I would propose the uh, what we're calling the bucket hood that's made from you know all readily available material, Home Depot type material, 
because uh, I think that fits the best with the open sourcing concept. And then the uh, intubation shield, and I thought the design that Ben Nichols ended up with was the preferred design from the standpoint of simplicity and meeting generally meeting the needs of it, uh, that being the, the uh, shrink wrap type framework. And then the third one being the negative pressure. Uh, so um, the concept so far is that I get a bill of materials, uh, any drawing or work instructions. Uh, we've, we've created a folder you know, on the um, TSC drive for that. But at some point when it's refined and we probably ought to do a test case and take somebody that's green, that's not familiar to the project and and let them do it and see if it works and find out whether the instructions <laughs> make sense to them or not. I think that don't give them the instructions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then, um, and then at that point, as I said, any guidance that you folks can give us as to um, either reviewing it, proofing it, or how we go about the open sourcing, it's not something I'm familiar with. I haven't, haven't done it. I'm too nose to the grindstone on you know our current things we're do doing and haven't explored that. But that, that's the way I see it so far is pull together the package, proof it, review it, sort of a, like a design review, a test case, and then open source it. Well, can I, I just like to add a little bit, I, I may have jumped the gun already. I've begun, I've unleashed uh, the open sourcing as far as the uh, intubation sh box goes um, and for those of you who haven't seen it I'll just, I'll just share this um, there's a, of course you know there's a massive sharing community on Facebook and I've been sharing yeah. with I've sent Dave some of the contacts uh, or some of the addresses for it but there's one in particular that seems to be a pretty massive group um, and that's the um, that's uh, the CO, uh, what's it called? COVID Open Source Medical Supply page. And uh, I've tried to share it to that, um, but they're reviewing it. But just within my own contacts, reaching out to people all over the country who have friends in the ER, in the medical community, they're in the ICU or they're nurses. And um, mm -hmm. I immediately started putting it up on social media and got a lot of response and a few kind of mavens, you know, uh, media mavens within my realm really got excited about it because um, we're all film workers and we're part of a gig economy that is trapped in the doldrums right now. And uh, so we got nothing better to do than repost stuff. Um, so it's moving right now. Uh, that is at least on some social media level spreading. Um, now, whether or not people do it and build them, all, you know, who knows, but it is so easy to make. I think that's the thing about open source. Uh, additive manufacturing and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, things with lots of really precise seals and assembly processes uh, are going to be very problematic for people to open source themselves in any kind of quantity. I liked what, you know, I think it's, Rob, I think you're going to see a lot more people coming to you and, and Mike and just saying, we want the hoods assembled, we ship them to us. How many can, can we get a dozen and have them here Thursday? Yeah. And, and that's going to be, the, that yeah. there will be communities yeah. that, that aspire to build them, but man, some of that work is probably beyond folks, at least the, yeah. not the, not the In bucket the stuff, the, yeah. uh, the inflatable style, Rob. Yes, and just to comment, Ben, you know, what you showed looks very simple uh, to folks, but it is really, really important. I have um, had good fortune of talking to people that are acute respiratory distress experts with 20 year plus years experience, and the, having something to shield the patient care provider from when they're right there looking into the face of the patient and trying to do the intubation it is not an easy thing to do and so anybody that understands what it's what the purpose is is going to buy in very quickly and see the beauty of the simplicity of it in that and just one more comment in any of these things I think the if we can somehow say what it is and what it's for 
in bold highlight so we get the point across. And uh, that will be key to it. It's, it's how, how often it's being utilized. You know, if you just put up drawings and expect them to come to the conclusions, it might not as get get as much usage. So, you know, there's that, that's a great point. And there's so many, uh, even within SketchUp, I, I know, sorry, engineers out there for even uttering the word SketchUp, but, um, but, uh, require that because they are literally being placed on a patient. You're delivering uh, oxygen, which is a medication in, in essence. Others are, are the barrier things, the tent and so forth, that don't require that, uh, that degree of documentation. And so um, anybody can go make them and, and use them, whereas as stuff that does have a direct patient uh, interaction is going to have to go through that approval process and whether that approval extends to the, the guy in the next state making the same thing or not I, I think is an open question okay yeah so this is kevin let me just um, ask another question i guess i'm not familiar with the whole maker community and i think it's great that we're getting engaged to find others that might be able to help in production or sharing designs and I guess where I'm not clear is that there's a community out there that starts building these things and how do we assess the, the demand and prioritize who the users of the end product are going to be or, or has anyone thought about that interface? Uh, can I comment here maybe? So just make a, a distinction between open source as a development methodology. So just getting some terms here. So if we talk about open source, it means that the blueprints, it's a development method where things are in the open. So uh, the point to make about it is that if we talk about open source, like say there's the content that you guys are working on and op open sourcing means literally like when you talk about it in practice, it means declaring a license so that everybody is clear that yes, this is open so you can actually build it, modify it, you can actually sell it. That's part of the open source definition. So all of that uh, is possible. And then there's the idea of collaborative versus non-collaborative open source. Like, for example, if you guys are working, like, say, at NASA behind uh, in, in your institution, that's it's an open can be an open source process for you guys. But until you declare a license that is open to the world, then that's not collaborative yet needs to get out into the public but the point is that once it's in the public it's pretty much in the wild so as far as getting organized production happening anywhere i mean that has to be a a coordinated effort if you have the the open source design it doesn't mean that magically it appears and everybody starts making it it means that it's available and then uh, various mechanisms can be used to make it uh re to reify it to make it real um so there it's Basically, open sourcing means that you're just putting out in, into the wild and it's about the real intent of open source is the collaborative development part. Uh, what happens afterwards, that's a big mystery. And it's like someone has to put in a mechanism to execute that based on the open plans. So I don't know if that helps any thinking on that. No, that so, helps me understand it a little better at least. And yeah. I, I, I guess once that collaborative design is out there and is available through the, the marketplace, the open source marketplace areas, then it's a matter of calling people's attention to it through other mechanisms that, hey, if you have local needs, here's one thing that this task force in the community
community has developed and go do good things. Yeah. Uh, so to me, the the shields are pretty clear cut as far as those are something we could release that aren't, um, you know, um, aren't medically being used on the patient. Um, and maybe the first step is, is Ben, you, uh, you sending what you have since you've already uh, released it in some extent, sending to Jessica and um, some of the, the other open source people on here and them reviewing it and saying, uh, giving feedback uh, as well as um, Jessica, if you, if you want to send us um, some examples or sites, because even, you know, me, I build tons of stuff on my own, but other than specific forums, I don't, um, I'm not part of a, a general community. So that might, those uh, giving us some sites or like the wiki you were talking about um, uh, that we could review and kind of see examples of, of this stuff for ourselves to see how, um, how things might fit in that we're doing. Sure, yeah, that makes sense, absolutely. I wonder too about, um, well, it might be something we can talk and see how it goes, but it might be something we can also help organize the, some more of the mechanism and the interface, the public interface of it with, I mean, I think the potentially offering online forums where something's getting made and there's sort of a live opportunity for people to participate could be a way that um, you just make it more accessible and make it more a, make it more of an opportunity for people to actually produce for themselves different you know, some of the different technologies so um, that might be another part that we can you look at as things move forward if anybody wants to just look uh, just Facebook me under my name you can see how it's been posted um, Is that Ben yeah Ben Nichols yeah. uh-huh and then I, I think was, I saw your. I think I saw the box actually somewhere on Facebook. <laughs> I might I've, have even shared it again. <laughs> yeah, I made a, <laughs> if, uh, I made, George had put it up. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there have been a couple versions of it. This is the third, third version of it. The other ones were hard acrylic versions, but um, you know, I just I think I, I wrote a pretty uh, involved description, and when you see it pop up on social media, you know, you catch maybe the first six or seven lines of description and then you see the image the pdf which of course you can't really use in social media it's got to go out as a jpeg um for all of you creating documents um better to build them in whatever sketch up something something and then export it into eventually get it into a jpeg uh because yeah, you should have shaped the pdf as a jpeg actually but yeah yeah, but I find PDFs just do weird things when you put them in Facebook and Instagram. They just don't. They, they just, lose lines. Yeah, yeah it just it's not quite. Yeah, so a JPEG always works great. But anyway, if you, you know, it's, as far as how you put it out there, I, I hear what you're saying, Marston, about the plans, and I just um, some things the the. Yeah, the EUA, the Emergency Youth Authorization process. Does does do I need to be concerned at all about that for this thing? So um, here, here's my comment on that. People are concerned about there's absolutely liability liability issues, like if someone kills themselves or you hurt somebody. But I think a generic way to get past that is simply very clear disclaimers, like this will kill you or this is dangerous or whatever. Like this is at your own risk. There's no implied or or explicit warranties involved so basically just making that very clear upon publishing so that you're you're covered and people are covered so it's about transparency that just has to happen and you, ca you can never uh, prevent you know dumb people from killing Stupidity. themselves or whatever but <laughs> I mean that applies to whether you know you release it or not I mean <laughs> well, so yeah I mean they're basically just sticking their head inside a dryer bag so <laughs> user use at your own risk yeah um, it's too late for that it's out there in the world but um, yeah anyway just if you want to take a look at what I already put up just check it out I probably was gonna put it up on my Instagram too just because I have so many more friends who've just given up nobody you know my 18 year old son will tell you very clearly nobody uh, who's cool has anything to do with Facebook 
Um, it's only for old geeks like us in their 50s. Yeah. So it's cool still to stay in touch. Uh, but he, he's already moved on. They, they can't stand Instagram either. You know, he's got their Snapchatting or whatever. So mm -hmm. as you approach your media, as you approach. Yeah, I can't keep it. <laughs> yeah, it's like. I mean, the people who look at Facebook are still part of the maker and engineering community, clearly. Um, and people are using it almost in an institutional form now. It feels uh, I mean, giant hospital groups and giant user groups are sharing, you know, medical technology through it. Uh, it's not so much young people uh, making use of the platform right now, I think. But, well, um, unfortunately, we're about to get kicked off of Zoom here, and I've got another meeting I've got to run to. Um, so I think, uh, I think this is a great first start for, uh, for talking and um, kind of sharing what's going on beyond our effort, um, what might be useful. So let's... That looks like it, ladies and gentlemen.